everybody, welcome back. Andrea Tarowski here with Dental L Tutoring, another episode of Study Well with Dental L. I'm going to be talking to you guys today about fluoride, okay? Because everybody has this question always, all the time. It's something you do have to know. So whether you're a dental hygiene student taking the board exam, a dental assisting uh, student taking the board exam, or if you just simply want to know because you're a dental professional and you have questions. So this pretty much applies to anybody and everybody who's in the dental community. So the main fluorides that you have to know for the board exam and for the office um, it's pretty simple actually. So think as simple as possible. So you have the 1.23% acidulated phosphate fluoride. This is the fluoride that you typically see in uh, the foam. So think the ones that you probably had as a kid because it's been out there for a long, long time. It's, it's the foam you put in the trays and then in the patient's mouth. So that's the acidulated phosphate fluoride, 1.23%. And this type of fluoride is really good for anybody. Now, the only issue with it is if your patient has any composite fillings or think crowns, think veneers, think bridges, it's not the best fluoride to use. The better type to use for those types of patients would be your neutral um, fluoride. And that can come in a variety of percentages, but usually it's around 2%. But it could come in pretty much any percent, but usually it's around 2%. So that's 2% neutral fluoride. That is good for those patients who have composites, crowns, bridges, veneers, it doesn't matter. It's good for everybody because it's a more neutral type. Um, because if you were to use the acidulated phosphate fluoride on, let's say, a patient who has composites, it might actually etch the composite a little bit and you don't want that, especially if your patient has spent a lot of money on, let's say, a crown. Um, it could etch that crown a little bit and the patient would wonder why their crown looks like it has little teeny tiny um, like pits or um, scratches per se in it. So not a good thing. So that is when you want to use the 2% neutral fluoride. Now, on the board exam, but listen up, the board exam committee wants you to know that for a variety of patients, actually, the fluoride varnish is the best answer. And this is because you can pretty much put it where wherever you want and on any types of teeth you want any type of areas as well. So think, if you were to use, let's just say the neutral fluoride mouthwash, that is going a little bit everywhere, but if you want it specific to a certain area, then you should use the, uh, the fluoride varnish. Even the 1.2% acidulated phosphate fluoride, if you put that in trays, or let's say you um, paint it on the teeth, Yes, you're painting it on the teeth so you could control it, but it's not, the consistency is different. Like a fluoride varnish isn't as um, as flowable, for lack of a better word. So the acidulated phosphate fluoride foam, it's, it's not as compact, whereas the fluoride varnish is a little bit sticky, which is a good thing because it helps to stick to the teeth. So on the board exam, they want you to know usually that the fluoride varnish is the way to go for most patients, especially if they have sensitive teeth, especially if they have um, uh, recessions and, and they're sensitive from those. So that's always the key there too. But again, it does depend on the patient. It does depend on the situation, but those are just some little um, tips for you. But pl plus remember the post-op instructions. For the fluoride varnish, it's a little bit different. For all the other types, you would tell the patient to wait half an hour to an hour um, before they eat, drink, or rinse their mouth. Whereas the fluoride varnish, it's at least four to six hours where they should be waiting before they eat or drink anything. Um, it's even helpful to wait until the day afterwards, so then that way the fluoride varnish has the full effect on the teeth. So you see how there's slight differences with every single one. So I hope I didn't confuse you guys too much. Um, if you need anything, just let me know. I do talk about this quite a bit in the Board Exam Prep Academy because students need to know this for the exam because they do ask a lot of case type, case um, study type questions on the board exam for both um, dental hygiene and dental assisting students. So it's something you need to know. So if this is a little bit confusing to you, please have a look in your textbook at the very least, but if you want to know a lot more, it does help to be a part of the Board Exam Prep Academy. 
So if you need anything, again, let me know. I hope this helped and stay tuned for the next episode.